watching this video, we're going to have a cannonball that's fired with a velocity of 150 meters per second at a castle that is 700 meters away. And the question is, at what angle does it need to be fired in order to reach that castle at exactly 700 meters away? Now, this problem is going to get fairly complicated mathematically, so follow along closely. So what we're going to do is um, because we don't have the angle, we're going to go ahead and solve for the um, vertical and horizontal components of the velocity in terms of um, theta. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to call our velocity in the x direction 150 times the cosine of theta because we don't know that angle. And then we're going to go ahead and call the vertical component 150 times the sine of theta because we're utilizing the opposite end with the hypotenuse for the y component. Now, with that being said, um, we're going to have to do a couple different substitutions. So this formula right here is specifically for anything in constant motion or in constant velocity. So that's only applying to the horizontal component, the VX component over here. So what we're going to do here is we are going to take this 150 cosine of theta and then plug it in for the velocity over here. And then we're going to get 150 times the cosine of theta equal to the delta x. The delta x we actually do know as 700 over t. And then we can go ahead and cross multiply these two numbers. And then we can solve for t in terms of theta. Now, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to set up a second expression, um, including the VY of 150 sine theta. And what we're going to do for that one is we know a couple other things in the Y direction or the vertical direction. We know that the delta Y is zero because it starts at ground level and then it finishes at ground level. So it doesn't have any change in height from the beginning to the end. We know the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then we also have our VY value, although it's not a specific numerical value, but we know that it is 150 times the sine of theta. So what we're, we're going to want to do is set up all of these variables in this formula over here and then do a little substitution as well. So let's go ahead and start placing everything into this formula. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put zero meters in for our delta y for our vi. Our vi is the initial velocity in the vertical direction, which is just 150 sine theta. So 150 times the sine of theta. And then for this t over here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take 700 and divide it by 150 to get uh, about 4.67 and then the cosine of theta would still be on the bottom there. So then if I take this over here, um, I'm going to multiply this by 4.67 and then have that cosine of theta on the bottom. Now that just covers the VIT section of it. So I'm going to go ahead and include the one half AT squared portion of it. So it's one half times negative 9.8. And again, we're gonna sub this in, actually this in right over here for the T. So my T is going to be 4.67 squared over um, cosine of theta squared. Okay, because everything is t squared, so I just squared everything inside of it. Now, what I'm going to do is simplify it a bit, and the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this sine and cosine, and then I'm going to make that the tangent of theta, and then I'm going to multiply the 4.67 times the 150, and then that's going to give us 700 0.5. So right now it's getting a little messy looking, so I'm going to condense it a little bit, and then plus... And then I can take the one half times negative 9.8, which is negative 4.9, and then multiply it by 4.67 squared. 
So that's going to give us um, negative 106.86. And then we're going to have 1 over cosine of theta squared. Okay, now this is where there's a, a couple of trig functions that you're going to need to be aware of in order to make the correct substitutions. So I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of that work over here. So 1 over cosine squared is secant squared, and secant squared is 1 plus tangent squared. Okay, so we're going to make that substitution and then slide this in over here so that we'll have a common trig function with this tangent of theta and this tangent of theta as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this all up. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative uh, 106.86 and distribute this to the 1 and the tangent squared. So that's going to leave me with negative 106.86 times that tangent of theta squared. And then I'm going to pull this over here. So I'm going to do 700.5 times the tangent of theta. And then the negative 106.86 that I distributed to this one is going to leave me with a minus 106.86 as well. So now the reason I rearrange it like this is so then we could basically use it and find the unknown with the quadratic formula or graphing it and finding the two intersection points where the graph crosses the x axis. So what you can basically do is just pretend this is like an x squared and this is an x. Um, and then when you do that, and as I said, you either use a quadratic formula or you graph it, you're going to get two answers for your unknown. So like, let's just call that x for now. And then that's going to give us 0 0.156. And then it's also going to give us uh, 6.399. Okay, that doesn't look like an angle because that is equivalent to the, the tangent of theta. So if we go ahead and find the um, inverse tangent of 0 0.156 and the inverse tangent of 6.399 that will give us our two angles and those two angles are 8.87 degrees round it off and then this one is going to give us 81.12 degrees round it off as well okay so why do we get two answers because if you fire projectile if it's any other angle besides 45 degrees complementary angles two angles that sum up to 90 degrees will always give you the same range so this 8.87 and this 81.12 just about add up to 90 degrees but due to a little bit of rounding it's not 90 degrees on the dot um, but that's why we have two answers so to sum things up you're going to want to make sure that you do this substitution over here for t and then plug that into a y formula so that you can um, get into this setup over here that gets fairly complex mathematically. You're going to have to do some trig identities as we did over here in purple so that you're able to sub that in to get your tangent squared and your tangent of theta to use something like the quadratic formula or some graphing to find your two unknown values and then turn those two unknown values into a theta value that are two complementary angles. So I hope that was helpful to you. Thank you for watching and listening.